Hello everyone, welcome to my The Young and the Restless Homies official channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. This week on The Young and the Restless Nikki resists the urge to drink, Summer and Daniel discuss their romantic life, and Sharon confronts Chance. Chance questions what he just walked in on at Crimson Lights. Summer lies about discussing Marchetti's next fashion collection with Sharon. She walks away. Chance informs Sharon that he believes they were discussing him. Sharon admits that they were discussing him and chanting his praises. Chance has a different feeling but will not press. They exchange kisses. Claire asks Victoria how long she's been in Claire's room. Victoria responds, not for long, and inquires as to how she is feeling. Claire is at a loss for words. Victoria has brought her some books, which she notices. They are, according to Victoria, a handful of her favorites. Claire inquires if she was reading to her as she slept. Victoria was talking to her about Claire's nightmares. She was dreaming of the cabin and the confrontation between Nikki and Jordan. In her dream, she shot and killed her aunt. She couldn't do it in real life. Victoria feels sorry she has to go through this, but it makes sense that her mind is attempting to kill her connection to her aunt so that her grip on her life is permanently lost. Claire feels bad about it. Victoria believes she is guilty of everything. Perhaps this is her mind's method of processing it and letting go of the pain. She inquires as to whether she is at ease in her surroundings. Claire is becoming increasingly terrified. Victoria informs Claire that she is now protected. Jordan will never return for her. Claire finds it all unsettling and believes she will never be able to escape her nightmares or her history. She's scared she'll never be able to sleep well or feel safe again. Victoria reassures them that this will not last forever. She simply requires time, rest, and therapy. Cole and I will be here for you. How? Claire inquires. She never expected in a million years that her biological mother would be at her bedside, checking on her. But I don't know what comes next, and I don't know if I'm strong enough to face whatever it is. Victoria reminds her that she has already overcome so much, and that her strength will see her through. Claire admits that she is dreading the treatment sessions. She wishes to delete her entire existence from her mind. Victoria reminds her that she must accept what has occurred and recognize that it is not her fault. She is capable of leading a regular life and finding true happiness. Claire believes she does not deserve happiness, asking herself, What if I don't even deserve to get better? Victoria assures Claire that she deserves happiness and that she is not to fault for what occurred. Claire claims she is not a child and understands what is right and wrong. She happily agreed to Jordan's proposal. Victoria believes she didn't have much of a choice because Jordan had groomed her to do those things. Claire inquires if she is still imprisoned. Victoria assures her that she is and hopes that she will spend the rest of her unhappy life there. Claire is concerned about what will happen if she escapes. Victoria pledges she will not allow this to happen. She'll pay for her actions far away from you and locked up away from the rest of us. Claire wonders how Victoria can be so kind and reassuring. How can you even stand to look at me? Nikki recalls the vodka IV drip at the lake house in her office at Newman Media. Stop it, stop it, stop it, she exclaims. Get out of here. Audra appears, alarmed, and inquires, Nikki. Are you okay? Audra understands what she's going through. Nikki snarls. Do you know? Fighting alcoholism according to Audra, is a never-ending battle of resolve and temptation. She understands how stress and trauma may affect the fight. She knows this since she stayed with her father on the battlefield until he lost the war. Nikki apologizes and understands how difficult it may be to reveal something so personal. Audra's point is that she understands how difficult it may be and how much it can cost you and your family. So, if you ever need anyone to talk to, Audra reveals that she grew up recognizing the signals of someone struggling with their desire to drink. Nikki assures her that she should not be concerned. She and her family will be fine. Thank you for your concern. I understand, 
Audra replies as she walks away. Summer visits Daniel's house and admires Sally's artwork. Her brother inquires if she came to assess his decor. She saw it during the holidays. Summer claims she came over to check on him and Lucy. Daniel requests that she pause. What's really going on? Summer admits that she needed to speak up. Summer he finds it uncomfortable that everyone appears to understand how she feels. She shakes her head. I don't know what I'm doing. She's a CEO and a mother, and she doesn't have time to be preoccupied with a guy who's involved with someone else. Daniel is at a loss for words since he is preoccupied with his own emotional mess. Is it Lily? Summer inquires. Daniel refuses to discuss anything, but Summer claims he brought it up. Daniel admits that Heather may be attempting to initiate a romantic relationship between them. Why wouldn't she want to rekindle things? Summer wonders. Heather is certainly eager to reassemble her family. Isn't he curious to discover whether there's still a spark? Daniel objects to the fact that they have both moved on. Summer contends that this does not prevent people from feeling and acting on their emotions. Daniel observes that it has prevented her from acting on her feelings for chance. Summer claims that Chance was never mine to begin with. Summer informs Daniel that she and Chance have never even dated, whereas he and Heather have a history. They'd still be together if he hadn't messed up. Summer should not have any regrets, according to Daniel. Summer will not pursue him while he is with Sharon. Daniel believes Heather should appreciate his decision to move on, saying, Lily and I are doing just fine. Summer inquires if he has informed Heather of this. Daniel responds, Absolutely. Summer believes that as long as he isn't sending confusing signals, she will tolerate it. When the conversation returns to chance, Daniel believes Summer is making excuses. He assumes Phyllis instructed her to go for it. Summer verifies this, saying, You know our mom. Daniel inquires whether she expects him to contradict or support their mother. Sharon informs Chance at Crimson Lights that her launch is scheduled for next week. He's delighted for her and will clean his suit. He keeps her up to date on his progress at Chancellor and Billy's role as his mentor. Sharon claims he has extensive corporate experience. Chance isn't convinced he wants his power straight away. If you and I weren't dating and Summer asked you out, would you be interested? Sharon asks. Chance is perplexed as to where this is coming from. Sharon claims to have picked up on it. When he walks into a room, she lights up. Chance believes she is overreaching, saying, We're nothing but friends. If you and I were not going out, would you be interested in dating her? Sharon says. Chance is completely unaware, but he does know that I'm dating you and I like what we have. She requests that he tell her exactly what they have. Nikki walks up to the society bar and orders a sparkling water. While dealing with other customers, the bartender adds vodka from her flask to the water. Nate walks in, hoping she isn't unhappy with him. She adds out that he informed her husband that she is drinking again, thus she is not pleased with him. Oak, but was I wrong? Nate inquires. Victoria tells Claire in her room that looking into her eyes isn't difficult for her. She only wants the best for herself. The more she is around her, the more she notices the courage and power she possesses. She rescued her mother and told her aunt, I'm so proud of you. Claire noticed their anxiety and hatred in their expressions at the lake house. Victoria insists on being truthful with her. She believes in herself and the life she can lead. They can collaborate on it. Claire believes Victoria is still in shock. What happens when she realizes she is no longer that sweet, innocent baby? Nothing remains but a cruel monster who tortured her. If she discovers this, the look in her eyes may be fatal. Victoria swears she and Cole will never gaze at her in that way again. Claire claims she cannot keep that vow. Victoria requests that she not keep them out. Claire apologizes, but every time she sees them, she feels a knot in her gut anticipating the day when they will hate her again. Their child perished. Claire is not herself. Victoria insists to Claire that she is not alone in this. We'll get through it together. Claire claims she isn't fearless or strong. You'll always be the parents that abandoned me, and I'll always be the person who tortured you and my family. 
She tells Victoria to go and never come back. Victoria believes they should go cautiously. Claire exclaims, just go. And please do not return. She'll tell them not to invite her. Victoria begs her not to do this. Let me help you through this. She grabs her pocketbook and coat to Nikki and at away. society that he was just concerned about her. The doctor's instinct is something that never leaves you. Nikki is adamant that her family is aware of her travels. They'll be all right, and he doesn't need to worry anymore. Nate encourages her to maintain her strength and take care of herself. Nikki drops her drink and walks away. Summer tells Daniel that she's tried everything to distract herself from her feelings for Chance. But every time she sees him, the feelings and questions return. Daniel jokes that she's in love with him. Summer is left wondering if it works both ways. Daniel inquires whether she has any reason to believe he and Sharon are unhappy. Chance asks Sharon what's up with the inquiries at Crimson Lights. Does she believe he has feelings for Summer? Sharon shrugs, acknowledging that she is a beautiful and successful woman. So are you, Chance says. He wonders whether this is her devious way of putting a stop to their relationship. Sharon argues that this is not the case. She looks forward to spending time with him. They exchange kisses. Sharon, on the other hand, must be truthful with him. She isn't searching for a long-term relationship right now. Chance is oak with the way things are. Sharon is aware that he has a great heart to share and that his previous relationship was cut short. She doesn't want to push him or hold him back. Chance maintains that he is precisely where he wants to be, doing exactly what he wants to do, with you. They kiss once more. Summer tells Daniel that she had a talk with Sharon earlier and got the feeling that she and Chance hadn't considered a future together. Daniel Munoz, that sounds like me and Lily. Heather's decision to test the waters doesn't surprise Summer. She says, screw it. She'll do the same thing with Chance. At Newman Media, Victoria interrupts Nikki and Audra and requests to talk with her mother alone. Audra walks out and shuts the door. Nikki inquires if everything is fine. Victoria inquires as to how her mother is doing and whether she is ready to return to work. Nikki felt it would be a good distraction, but she almost drank before she realized it. Victoria is relieved to hear she has come to a halt. When Nikki ran with Nate at society, she admits he was the one that drew her back. Victoria describes him as a gentle and compassionate man. Nikki inquires as to what is going on with Victoria. She sighs and says, it's Claire. She's afraid she'll lose her again, this time forever. Next on The Young and the Restless, Sharon makes a decision regarding her future based on the past. So what do you guys think about this update? Let me know in the comments below. And if you like my videos, please press like and subscribe for more. I'll see you guys next time.